Welcome back to Satisfactory. And welcome to the Double Decker bus. So, yeah, we finished the stuff up north up there. And we have our steel pipes and steel beams and encased industrial beams all laid down onto the bus. I brought it down. I have made some changes. Of course, we need to get bigger. So the bus now comes down and I've made a turn. Along the right, bear in mind this entire base is temporary. Uh, along the right, we're going to be putting larger blueprints at some point. But for supporting what we want to do right now, I needed to drop down some blueprints really quick just to get a few things building. So we've got circuit boards, which I am keeping a box of down there, uh, just in case I need them. But I'm also allowing that box to drain, because what we really need are computers. And our plastic rate of production is low, and we have already used up everything in the box, so yeah. <clears throat> we've got computers, We've got heavy modular frames coming. Basically, I overclocked the heck out of these four manufacturers. This is a new blueprint. This is my generic manufacturer blueprint. Uh, I will go over that shortly. Uh, since I've done so much since the last recording, this is going to be a lot of review in this recording. Anyway, so building computers. Building heavy modular frames, also we can unlock the next couple of things, which we'll go take a look at. And the first thing you notice is that we are absolutely, you know, that's not a lot of plastic. But we're going to want more plastic. We're also going to want more rubber and more power and more everything else too. Uh, saw that brief blip while I was drawing down the plastic rapidly my power plants actually starved themselves of fuel to support the plastic production and we were getting some irregularities so I can go back to the power plant and turn those four back we'll do that shortly but the main reason I needed those is I want to unlock railway signaling which is going to be taking computers Pipeline engineering, which requires heavy modular frames. And the Mark II blueprint machines to get 5x5 five five blueprints. Yay! Which requires both of them. And there's a whole bunch of other craft we're going to need as well. So, let's get those unlocking. Notice I actually have everything in inventory that I'm going to need for this. So now we have railway signaling, and in theory now I could set up a railway with signals and it would be it would be working. I don't have the 5x5 five five blueprints yet. I'm, I'm saving that for the last unlock. So we've got five minutes. Let's take a look at one of the blueprints that I reworked. Oh, uh, what I won't show is I did get back in and I fixed the Mark IV, uh, the Mark IV 3X Assemblers blueprint. Remember, it didn't have its inputs hooked up? I fixed that. I don't think I went back and revised these two blueprints. Uh, I will have to check that at some point. But the new blueprint is this guy right here. Mark IV belts, two generic manufacturers. And I wasn't sure whether this is going to work or not, so... This manufacturer is actually sitting on the bottom of the blue, not raised at all. I looked at him, I thought, he's too tall. And I thought, well, how high can I go? At what level can I put in the second guy? I thought, well, let's, let's see if I can overlap him. I thought maybe this was going to be 20 meters tall, when, and I've got 32 meters. So I put in some foundations, some of the big ones, three tall, and I was able to center this guy, and I was also able to put this guy in centered underneath him, which is really great. 
because that means I can bring the inputs in. So the inputs come in. They're just coming in through these normal uh, two window walls. They go right into a splitter and half of them go in the lower one and the other half go up top. So we've got our four inputs in the front. We've got splitters in the front and then we've got this guy in the back comes down to a merger and they have all got the normal normal low level on the bottom and I kind of liked the idea that we saw from Fluxo on his generators of raising the floor uh, we're not covering the frame here what we're doing is we're covering the built input and I may look into doing this further with additional machines where I embed the machine in the foundation rather than leaving it on top. Uh, that has the potential to make our belts and pipes completely 100% hidden instead of having the lifters come up out of the ground and go in. It's especially important for the pipes because I really, uh, even though I have used a mechanism where I string the pipes under the floor and come up, that's actually not good. <clears throat> Because when you the machine uses its local supply of, of fluid, it won't get refilled until the pipes feeding it fill all the way back up. So it works great as long as it's a short run and you've got a nice uh, pump pressurizing everything. The other thing I considered was dropping this floor down by one, which would give us these guys, give us a little bit of a, of a texture here. Um, See, I actually have placed uh, a couple of uh, foundations below that. I actually can't reach that gray foundation, the concrete one. I can't reach him. I can't him. I can't uh, repaint him or anything unless I remove the manufacturer. But it looks pretty good. Um, with the right texture there, that could be a, a nice way of doing it. Um, so on the upper level, I left it like that. So we've got our concrete foundation that we have sunk our manufacturer into. And we're leaving that that top bit there. And I kind of like the look. So if I have to redesign the, uh, the blueprint, I will probably go down to the bottom and uh, lower top ceiling of the area here by one. Uh, I will have to leave it up, you know, where, I, where I've got these windows, I would want to leave it like this. So I could put everything else down by one. And then you, in, in back, we would have a centered foundation, which would be high and the rest would be low. That's all for looks. Key thing is, we've got two of these guys. And, ooh, we're ready to do the next unlock. Let's go do the unlock. Next unlock is pipeline engineering, and we need heavy modular frames, and we need plastic, and we need... And we got another five minutes. So let's go to the blueprint designer. I'm going to go ahead and grab all the materials from the box here. There are a few corrections. For example, inside my blueprint, uh, a couple of the lifters are Mark 1 instead of Mark 4. I'm not sure how that happened. I will have to get in and fix that before the next time I use them. I've got a note on that. So with this in place, uh, I was actually, I, I had some summers loops, so I scrounged up some summers loops enough to, to put the output multiplier up. It takes four summers loops to fully set up the multiplier, and with four summers loops in place, it doubles my output for the same inputs. So we ran with doubled outputs for a while. Summers loops are a little, um, a little precious right now, so... I won't use that when I'm in a hurry. We'll leave it at this lower rate for the overnight runs. The other thing I can do is boost that. 
the danger is not just that we will outpace the plastic production, which we are, we are still outpacing the plastic production without increasing everything, but I actually ended up outpacing my circuit board. <laughs> Wait a minute, no, 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 it wasn't circuit board, it was this guy. Right. Because this guy is taking 240 screws per minute right now. He's still got the summer's boots in because I'm, I'm still trying to catch up on modular frames. So I ran with those in the, the computers for a while, now I'm looking up with them here. But 240 screws per minute, uh, if I put it all in one belt, that's this. 480 screws per minute being sync hooked up. And the only way I can get that many screws per minute easily is by using some of my steel beams. I didn't expect to use this recipe. I almost didn't unlock it. I'm actually down clocking a little bit. So he's actually able to go up to 260 per minute. So what I should have done was a modified blueprint where we push the manufacturer over to one side and on the other side we place a constructor where we were able to construct one of the inputs. And with that in place, as I overclock the, the manufacturer, I can also overclock the constructor that's paired with it. And as long as the total for the screw input didn't go too high, well, let's just see, 250%, uh, this would want 600 screws per minute, and we can't source that, we can't put that many over a belt yet. I could double its speed and use 480 and then double the speed of the constructor. So that's, I think, where I want to go. Um, if there's other recipes where the single constructor next to a manufacturer is helpful, uh, I would do that. We need a whole bunch of factories making heavy modular frames, I would do that. Otherwise, we'll just, you know, go with it. Because, you know, we can just leave it for a while. It's been running for a few hours. Uh, I have almost half an industrial container. I'm also pre presenting them on. So, let's see here. Uh, things I've added. Uh, I put some biofuel in. I just dragged that manual. I just, I went over to my box of biofuel and dragged three of them into this drop here to upload. Computers, heavy modular frames are added. Circuit board is added. And I dragged my chainsaw in there. If I need to cut things down, I can grab the chainsaw and a stack of biofuel. And when I'm done, I can push them back into the conventional depot. And we're good. Oh, and that's actually something you have to unlock, the ability to upload from inventory to the depot. Right in front, we can see the lower level of the double-decker bus. This is basically all of the six initial things that we were making in the base. Plus, uh, I, I needed to add reinforced iron plates and modular frames. We were making them. They were just going into a box and nowhere. But now we needed them on the belt because I needed to use them. So we've widened it to eight lanes on the bottom. And like any decent... Um, ready to unlock the next thing. Like any decent main bus, um, it has a way to grow. It can grow on either side at this point. Um, we've got two layers. <laughs> Exit Blueprints Mark II. Select Milestone. And we need a hundred of these. I've got and 100 of those and 400 rubber and 1500 concrete. We had some extras because we were building and deleting stuff. And we set it off. I am ready to build a 5x5 five five of this. So the 4x4 four four area um, isn't going to be big enough. We could go this way, but I'll need to remove that. Yeah, let's, let's do this. 
You go away. I'll build you back up later. Basically, I just need to make this one big. That, I think, was a blueprinted foundation. So this is going to go that. that and we can fill out the rest of this with our nice little blue area that is going to highlight for me where this goes <clears throat> is just kind of to lay it down for the first time. Special. Designer Mark II. This is going to require some heavy modular frames and some computers, but I don't put a lot of these down, so we're good. Center it that way. But to be lined up properly with my grid. But I can't connect to things outside. That's actually one of the complaints people have is that you can't test recipes by connecting inputs up to them and connecting power away from them. And you also can't drop a, a blueprint down somewhere and edit it and then update the blueprint from what you edited. Either one of those would allow you to test things in place, fix them up, verify the fix, and then put it in as it is now. You have to fix it, verify the fix, and then repeat the fix in the blueprint constructor. So this guy won't be able to load our existing blueprints. We could try. We can't load our our uh, 4x4 blueprints in here. Because I probably should have included 4x4 in the name. <clears throat> This would allow us to start a whole new line of them. Uh, I think you can go up to a six by six. I'm not sure where that unlocks. Uh, I may want to keep a four by four around in case I want to replace these guys with something with bigger belts or something. I don't know. But our next step here is we need to feed the base elevator that stuff. <laughs> what do we want to do between now and then? Well, let's take a look at something really quick. Uh, I actually missed something when I was designing my oil factory, or at least I will have seemed to have missed it. I chose... I chose to do a rather straightforward set of, of refineries. Uh, and I turned my back on what I call option A. This is the configuration that was responsible for my oil tower back in, I think it was update six or seven, I think it was seven, being just huge because this is actually the way to get the most fuel possible out of the oil, okay? Out of a single 120 per minute oil node, you can get 320 fuel. This is more than three times as much as what I'm getting now. I think, I think I'm getting 200 fuel out of 240 oil. Anyway, it's a, it's a huge increase. Uh, we do the same thing we did over there. We go to the heavy oil residue. And before what I did was I used the residual fuel, which turns this 160 per minute heavy oil residue into fuel. The way to do it in the future will be, this is what I'm looking forward to doing in this build, in the future, 
is you take the heavy oil residue and the water and you jam them all into one blender making diluted fuel and it produces fuel. That's it. Boom. And as a byproduct of this, you have your 80 polymer resin per minute coming out up here and you have 320 fuel. You could do the same thing with diluted packaged fuel. Uh, you can do, I, we could do this right now here in phase six or phase three, here, uh, I think it's tier six, whatever it is. Um, at our current technological level, yeah, tier six, um, <clears throat> I think you can do it after you've unlocked fluid packaging you probably want to have petroleum power unlocked to get the fluid buffers, but once you've done fluid packaging, you can use this, this recipe where we take this heavy oil residue and we push it into six refineries making diluted packaged fuel. But for that to work, we have to have the input coming in as packaged water. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So to do that, we need six buildings building packaged water, which are consuming a total of 320 across the six. That's not too bad, but you have your six, you have your water coming up, you go into the packagers, and then you go to the refinery, and coming out of the refinery is packaged fuel, and you unpackage the fuel, and now your fuel can go out, and the packages you can recycle. So this is kind of a closed loop. And this link, this back link in the middle are um, fuel containers. And I fiddled with that, fiddled with that, and I finally got it working. There's two things that can go wrong in that loop. First, you can run low on fuel containers. So you can end up with not enough fuel containers to keep that cycle going. Or two, you can have too many of them. And things can start, you know, stopping up. Uh, in both cases, it's not that hard to fix. Um, you just got to reach into the right place and pull some out or push some in. <clears throat> and in case there's a bug that causes you to lose one or gain one once in a while, um, you can always set up priority splitters, priority mergers, that is already splitters so that if you do backlog you can divert some of the empties away uh, and then use a merger to pull some in uh, maybe toss that into a big box somewhere so maybe everybody takes in the big box and puts back in the big box and if there's an overflow of the stuff going into the big box you toss them and then you have something eating into the input we need a priority input I think we have a priority merger here. Anyway, so that gets complicated. What I'm, what I'm getting at here is that this whole cycle here of package and unpackage and recycle the canisters back around and make sure you don't have too many and make sure you don't have enough. It's a big pain in the butt. I spent more time debugging that than, than I ought to have. So I've elected during this playthrough to skip option A completely. And we are going to not redesign our factory until we can get blenders. Okay. Now, once we get blenders, um, we now have, I copy it, I did not copy it. Let's go grab it. Recipes generated. Uh, so refinery plastic recycle. Check this out. So you make, you pump some oil, you turn it into heavy fuel. This is actually a generated file from Python. You get some heavy residue out of it. You make your diluted fuel. There's my comment here, alt unverified no containers. I haven't seen this recipe yet in game. <clears throat> so I am guessing that it hasn't changed. And if it rebalances, I'll have to fix that. Now that's going to give us um, a ton of fuel. It's going to use up all our residue. We have some resin left, so we're going to turn the resin into plastic and rubber. 
Now you notice something. Recycled plastic takes rubber and fuel and turns out plastic. It doubles the, whatever rubber it takes, you get twice as much plastic out and it costs you fuel. And then you can take plastic and add fuel to get rubber. So what if we run all, uh, we use this much, 16 per minute of each to seed this guy and give it some fuel and the output of the first machine, you know, we'll just put back and we'll set up all the machines so they loop back, okay? So we will, I don't know if I will make them tiered or if I will set up a loop and loop them back. Um, if I do a merger, I have to watch out that I don't let the polymer resin overflow, but if I do, well, we, we can always sink it. But the key thing is, if you get all of your plastic available for rubber and all of your rubber available for plastic, you've got 320 of each being made, and you get a net of 176 of each coming out. And if one side backs up, the other side still continues to make, just at a lower rate. So, yeah, um, this is great, but it does require using the recipe that gives you absolutely the most fuel you can get. I couldn't imagine uh, building the packaged, you know, the packaged diluted fuel, or the diluted packaged fuel, and using that whole cycle, and then feeding that into this, where we've got these paired refineries, one making plastic, one making rubber, and each one of them feeding the other one with a with a uh, smart smart guy that says, "Okay, I'm going to send you all of my rubber, and what you don't take, I'm going to send to the output." And that's the way you balance these things. Oops. And from time to time, my backtick key gets pressed and stays pressed. I'm not sure why that happened. Anyway, so that's what we're looking at there in the future for when we want to make more plastic and rubber. We can't do it yet because I am not going to do the whole recycling the uh, containers thing. Anyway, that was the one thing I was considering doing uh, before we start on this. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, what are these things we are building here anyway? Well, let's see. I believe those are all... Well, the first one's versatile frames. The other two, I think, are made... Come on. Ah, it's at the bottom, but it's not at the bottom of that. Oh, no. So modular engines and adaptive control units. I am going to open up a new recipe called phase underscore three. Let's bring in, say, that uh, production phase three load. want to get this started here before I open it up to the screen. Ow. <clears throat> Frames and modular engine and adaptive. Had a typo. 
tap type eight. Spell. Versatile framework. Ah, uh, okay. So let's let's take a look at the planning process here.
<clears throat> How long have I been on mute? Okay, we're still working our way through this plan. Trying to organize it so that I can do some of the build in order. So this is going to be... Um, I suspect this is going to be a long, boring planet video. So, let's see. Do I want to divide the motors? I, I kind of pulled the motor section up because this is motors and then smart plating also used rotors, but I'm not so sure about that. Um, smart plating's in a couple of assemblers. And if I search back, it's used in modular engines. Uh, um, I'll move it up into this section. No, I think that just complicates things. Again, I'm just trying to divide this up into chunks of work that I can accomplish one at a time with not too many blueprints for each. Or in some cases, it's just going to be single things. So for instance, motors, we have one assembler building motors. That's it. Who uses those? Well, the good thing is that it combines rotors and satters down, so it reduces the number of inputs of a subsequent thing would have. Anything I can do to make things simpler, especially in the first few builds. This final production is going to be pain. Um, final production will probably just be three individual, well, let's see, two assemblers building frameworks, two manufacturers building modular engine. And these will probably just be three individual areas where I manually put stuff down, each one of which is going to be dragging from a mega bus. It's gonna be, this is gonna be wild. It may even be that I put these down and I don't even build them until I've got all of the inputs to go into them. In boxes. So at that point it's pick up stuff out of a box, put the right number of things in the box. That means basically waiting, uh, waiting until we build all the materials for it and then dumping it all in and waiting again while they are built. Oh, it's one half a dozen of the other. Do I run belts or do I time? Do I spend time or belts? I think I spend belts. Okay, automated wiring consumes statters and cables. Heavy modular frame. Who's using heavy modular? Do I combine that in? Heavy modular frame is only used during final production. What you do is retain current heavy modular frame build and transport it dy into box in final. So the appropriate quantity for this. modular frames uh, is used in the adaptive control units
but we need to make 100 adaptive control units, and that requires 100 heavy modular frames. Okay, <clears throat> hand carry. Table. 100x heavy modular frame to end. Machine. Let's take a look at what else we have that might be that easy. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with computers. So 200 computers. check something. Um, so I, here I am thinking, wouldn't it be nice if I had a particular facility? Uh, so do I have a directive called have? No, I don't. I'm not going to sit here and, and generate all the Python. Never mind. We also need 500 circuit boards. And we are not currently making automated wiring. Well, you notice I'm starting over from the top again. <laughs> I am going to put in the full quantities here. So versatile framework is 2,500. We're going to ignore the number of machines. This is just going to be, instead of slash N, this is the actual quantity. The versatile framework needs 1,250 modular frames. Let's see, for 2,500, oops, 500. I think I can do that. Uh, 15,000 steel beam may be able to do that too. Hold on, um, to my steel beam box. I would not be averse to just feeding all of this stuff by hand, really. The so steel beams are 200 to a stack. be 75 stacks. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's 54 stacks right there. Um, I think I'm going to bring steel beams in from the bus. Modular engines. It's going to require a thousand motors. This may be easier than I thought. Now, motors aren't on the bus, but I am creating them and putting them in a box. Frames. 
Oh, I've got a whole bunch of those. We can hand carry those. Rubber. 7,500 rubber. I know, I know, I could probably just set this stuff up and start carrying, but I plan it out first by 200. This is 38, 37.5. So that'll be easy to do. Uh, modular engines, rubber, smart plating. Okay, so the smart plating is 1000X. You can carry that uh, it. Do I have it in a box here or? Up above somewhere. No, it's out here somewhere. Here's my room. This is by 100. But again, this is going to be... Uh, just because I don't want to be carrying half of it and then coming back later and carrying another half or stacking up a whole bunch of boxes. Um, and we have to wait for it to be built anyway because we only have the one box full. Smart plating requires iron plate. It requires rotors. Uh, rotors are in my motor bill. Oops. I forgot to connect that back up when I was in. I've got rotors on the bus. But I'm making engines, which means I have to have rotors being supplied somewhere. The rudders. Oh, spatter. Rotor. Rotor. Okay, so this build doesn't keep the statters or the rotors around. We'll need to make rotors. So the modular engines are going to be kind of involved. Um, do I have it all set up here? Crystal framework. Got to get the modular frame from me, get the steel beam from the bus. Modular engines have motors, rubber, heart plating, adaptive control units. 
automated wiring. Whoops. Automated wiring, circuit boards, heavy modular frames, and computer. Automated wiring is the old 500X Stator. The old 1000X cable. I got a better way to make. I don't have a better way of making. Poo. Um. Gonna be a lot of cable, so who knows? That match up framework. Modular engines, art plating. Motors, automated control unit, adaptive control unit, automated wiring, adder. I like to break these up by what kind of machine they are when it, it just kind of flows through like this. The manufacturing assembly, construction, Bristol framework is assembly, modular engine is manufacturing, adaptive control unit is Manufacturing. Hopefully we aren't feeding the output of a manufacturer into an assembler, but I don't think that ever happens. Smart plating is an assembly. Automated wiring is an assembly. Rotor and stator are assembly. Break up a little bit more. At some point, I need to add some ability to this planner so that I can denote. Inputs that I'm getting from the bus, don't tell me about them any further. Or inputs I'm getting from a box, just report the number of boxes I want, and so on. This breaks up into three nice chunks. Um, Editing down the plan right now into a to do list.
Okay, so the edited... Here's my edited list. So, data imports, I'm going to edit this up a little bit. Uh, the frames and carry box. Watch the frames we're carrying, motors and rubber we're carrying. The more things I hand carry, the less I, the less I have to worry about boxes, uh, about belts. And there's going to be a lot of belts here anyway. Rubber. First iron plate. Uh. Oh, that goes. Let's take it from the top. Modular frames are hand carry. Heel beams. A uh, belt from bus to. hand carry. Rubbers carry. Part plating we are building and should be showing up above. Yep, there it is. Reinforced iron plate is built from bus to to part plate. Rotors we're building. Screws we're building. Uh, the screws are being built from. Steel beams. I won't say where they're going to because that'll be clear as we we bring it. Screws are not oh. Did I not show? I didn't. <laughs> yeah, um, phase three. Okay, this is going to rewrite that generated file.
it again. <clears throat> frameworks and carry the modular frame. Steel beams are for the bus. Uh, motors are hand carry. Rubber is hand carry. Reinforced iron plate is for the bus. Rotors, screws, built. We have a whole bunch of steel. Uh, these steel beams are going to be a problem. Um, that may be the limit because we don't. We're producing steel beams, but we're not producing them all that fast. So once we get this started, uh, it may take a while for it to finish up the steel beam requirements. Um, holy Toledo. Oh, right. That's because I'm, this is how many assemblies I would need to make if I were doing this in one minute. <laughs> Heavy module frames come from the bus. Oh, never mind. I am going to hand carry heavy modular frames. And computers. And circuit boards. And automated wiring. We're going to build wiring. We're going to build statters. We're going to get cable from the bus. Actually, if I look at this in decreasing numerical order, unless there's a bit of a pattern here. <laughs> We're hand carrying the low quantities, although reinforced iron plate. Um, I think, we, I think we just filled the box. Did we just fill the box? Yeah, we have filled our box full of engines. All right, because we grabbed some from before. All right. Steel pipes. Um. Actually, you know what? I could just carry everything. Steel beams, I've got two boxes. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set this up so I, I just hand carry everything. And however long it takes is how long it takes. So that's the planning. <laughs> the planning is we are going to just do first stage of this. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. Can't do that. This still assumes that we make all of these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the bottom of this list and I'm going to start placing them out. 
Let's first of all correct the quantities. The modular engines, we're not doing 500, we are doing 10. We are doing two ACUs. We are doing that right. Divide it by, by 100 to begin with. Five, one, five. per minute. Uh, I don't believe I can sustain that rate of steel beams for long. And this is five manufacturers making modular engines. So let's reduce that to two. Oh, convenient. And we're dividing by 2.5. Twenty-five divided by two point five. Gosh, I wonder what that is. So what have we got here? Two manufacturers doing modular engines. One doing building ACUs. Tumblr's building personal frameworks, art plated. I don't think any of these quantities are too high. Let's see. Yeah, none of the quantities there are high. We can do this. We're going to start kind of from the bottom. Uh, I'm going to keep the consume and produce things so I can watch where I'm lacing things up, but I am going to dump out these tables. the screws so the rotors need screws I think that's it okay so only the rotors need screws Ooh. yes so I need batters rotors I think I think this is just gonna be a lay it out as we go kind of See, I can either lay it out. Well, um, no, I need access to inputs from the bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this side of the bus, same side as the, as, and we'll bring the outputs back on here. So we'll be moving from the bus out this direction, and the outputs will go these three somewhere. be the most primitive style of I don't even know if we're going to be matching up with that. Let's just start the build. 
the screws, one constructor making screws, feeding into one assembler making robots. Okay, easy enough. You are making... Heel screws. And... You need to be making a hundred per minute. What that target production rate is about. Um, we will down clock them later, and I do need to turn that Also going to do something unusual for me, which is I am going to start right off this actually I'm gonna feed each machine as I build it. So on this center, power down. Producing 100 per minute. We need steel beans on this line. Ah. Right on this midpoint. We do that. I have a down after going up. Level down. This is going to be a splitter. So if you put in Lifter for the input to the splitter. That gives you a stable place to put it. It also forces you, it forces the direction of the splitter because you're only has one input. Turn the unused stuff back to the thing. And now we want this to come down and I'm gonna bring it through here on the I want it, that is in fact where I want it. Let's see. And now we go down here. And you're making screws. thing is we need rotors which uses the screws and take some iron rods bring it out to actually that'll do oops I did just into the input. And that's going to be doing some clipping. I can bring it in slide. This guy is making rotors. So I can just connect it right back to there. 
He's all set to go. He's got his screws. Oh, he just needs his rods. Rods are coming in just to the left of this line. That should be somewhere. There they are. I want them to be going down here, which means I can bring them up. here. Uh, normally I would go ahead and just extend the bus and lay out all the belts and have that all done before I start the build. We've already started the build, so eh. I got this keyboard where I'm sometimes hitting extra keys without meaning to recently shifted to um, a Logitech keyboard that's got some keys down the left, which I like having, which they are more compatible. You are a splitter. It means that if I find the corner of the keyboard with my pinky, it's not the key that I'm used to having there by muscle memory. There you go. I need to put a splitter on this line. Down like that. I do like sneaking them in so that they they're tidy. Rods, and this is now creating our rotors. Our rotors need to be at a hundred percent because we are four rotors per minute. Next thing is we need an assembler building statters. And I am going to oops. I'm going to violate one of my rules. Get off of this. So the way I get around this is I can actually put into place Arc 2 power pole. We start running out of connections. So you need pipes and wire. Pipes are coming in along this line. I'm going to get that stuck in my head. Should be on the upper plate now because I'm now getting them steel instead of. What? On this means we need then these guys on either side of where we want it so that. Splitter sends it on the right lane. And that's the wrong place. I got the pattern in my head, but I didn't get it put correctly. So, again, it is to the right. Easy way to do this might be out here along this line, actually raise my 
lifter. That is a good Vermont. Here. Ah. Checking. Yep. In the right place. Now, if you put in the lifter going down and the lifter going up, they'll connect to each other and nothing else connects up to them. So, put in the one that determines where it goes, they get the merger in place, the splitter in place. And do the rest. <clears throat> now this guy is going to come in along the edge. We're going to be in a hole here. And that's the one. bring that in by one and it would be kind of like these guys I kind of like it it is like that down that and all in one belt no idea if that makes a difference it's a nice confirmation to me that we are straight guys back up or came down. I'm not gonna hook the outputs up. I'm just gonna extend the bus. I'm just gonna extend what I need when I need it instead of doing the whole bus. Got your pipes, now you need your wire. And pick that up. That's actually going to be on the lower level. You. Oh, the wire's right on the edge. Uh, okay. So here, back, over one, over one. Now you're just going to start making your statters at five per minute, and you need to be down clock to produce two per minute. So 
I could take this straight if I didn't mind clipping against that frame. I don't like the amount of clipping that puts that frame into the belt, not just into the book. Oh, so that's as far. <clears throat> That's got the rotors and the statters. There's the first section done. Got a review. Rotors we need for smart plating. That's it. Statter we need for automated wiring. That's it. So what I'm tempted to do is take these outputs, bring them out to the right, bring them back around here, and then elevate them a little bit, send them across the baseline so we can start our next stuff here. Alternative, I can continue heading out this way. Uh, we have plenty of space. I'll continue heading out that way. So automated wiring, we're going to take the statters, and smart plating takes the rotors. But it's based out a bit. We'll be able to bring some stuff in between. Find up there. Find up there. The statters, all my statters, all two per minute, going into automated, and automated wiring will be down clocked to once it gets power out. are going to automated wiring and we also have versatile frameworks are going to be out here but this guy already has four things attached I'm going to go our two pole so he can handle more connections in the future, like out to the left. You've got your rotors, you need your reinforced iron plates on the other. And you have your statters, you need your cable. The reinforced iron plates and cable are in Reinforced iron plates needs to go up over this guy. Cable can just jog over. Our cable in this line. Anchor that. That's cable. Where's my cable? Cable's right there. So. That's it.
can't nudge it if you're clipped onto the end of this. decide to move this guy off to the I am going to decide to This is going to have to come from here or to there. Uh, Reinforced turn. Um, I think that's one of the ones I didn't have on the belt. I'm hooking up anything I've got on the belt, but I don't. Come on. Oh, no reinforced iron plate. Ah, there it is. Okay, it's on the bus, so let's just take it from... turns yellow when it starts to semi-clip like that. And moving something until it turns yellow means you're soft clipping against something. You can still be placing it, but the graphics will intersect. This is longer than a single belt can I could have moved the reinforced iron plates by picking up a bunch and putting on a box. The downside is that these will continue to make this stuff even beyond the quantities that we need. But that's not a big problem. I can always take the stuff that it's extra and send it off into the, into the waiting arms of the sink. That's got weighted wiring and smart plating. Crystal framework is modular frames and steel beam. Modular frames are out here at the end of so they're nice and convenient. Bring the modular frames down somewhere. We just don't want to be.
and I turned it the wrong way. Let's do it like that. That gets me a nice gets me alignment on, on what is a normally a lane. Instead of being Modular frames. Some modular frames are up there. Oh, and this is crystal frameworks are running a hundred percent, giving me ten per minute because I need two of them. But let's just <clears throat> do this easy. Ten per minute. And smart plating I also need. So we are doing four per minute smart plating. That's a whole lot easier than building another one. Beams are the end. Up. Steel beams. <clears throat> this is how so many of my Factorio buses end. Just some products being stretched out further. Finally at all. Oh, 
but uh, continue to bring our verticals down between the sets of three. be drawing 60 per minute which I think <laughs> we may be overdrawing it <clears throat> but there's a bunch of boxes I really only have to go until the base elevator is full although I suppose I could divert outputs to a the uh, divert outputs to a sink when it does get full It'd be nice to do that, oops, right next to the thing. I can like, put it right here. Oh, let's see if I can do that. All I'm thinking about. So I hope a smart splitter is to hit. A little belt that I can see what's going on. I've got them turned right. Heart splitter. So these are uh, a weird distance from each other. I think that makes it impossible for this one to be reached vertical. Let's move him a bit. Twitter left. Actually going. That way, it probably will. Let's bring this out a bit further. Because these three are not on grid at all, so we'll keep them parallel until they can make a nice right angle to us. And I have placed them in the some point 
our outputs ready to go. We'll just clip them into those. We got the smart guys. Uh, I need to. So center outputs any. I'm gonna go over to the left. And we're actually gonna set overflow to both sides so I can copy and paste these guys. So any overflow will come up the top. Then going to end some work. Nice to <clears throat> you need to go to sink. Put a sink on here. Nice to have a sink be part of the space elevator. Up. Hey. On. Wind up. Kind of on the edge. Okay. Up. Okay. Some power. Really don't have power coming. You are ready to go. Embarrassing if I Okay, we're good. Okay. Start right, building up guys. Know what we're building. Manufacturer build adaptive control units. We need to build three manufacturers. I am thinking, I'm going to line them up here. 
their inputs facing the elevator and their outputs out this way. Outputs are then going to come out and go a wrap around it. Which means these guys are going to come make the turn and end this way. Let's leave, say, three of these guys. What do we need in the way of menu? Oh, versatile frameworks are one of my inputs, aren't they? The versatile frameworks don't make the bend, unless they're used up. Okay, so we're going to make modular engines. I'm going to overclock that one and adaptive control. Too big. Oh. There. Who's making the versatile? You. The versatile frameworks are ready to go. I am going to send the versatile frameworks into a subfloor. I'm not going to bother to trim that. frameworks way means that once we have filled this guy up with 2,500 versatile frameworks start sinking now we've got smart plating on one side and automated wiring on the other smart plating goes with a bunch of other stuff into modular engines and automated wiring goes with stuff so if I put the these both make a right and turn this way. This guy is going to be on the left hand side. This guy is going to be further down. Uh, I'm only going to leap. Well, let's leap. We need to put you somewhere here. coming to this guy and coming to that guy from that direction. Um, those in high so these six can come out and go out this way? Yeah. <clears throat> so they'll go over the six, it'll come down and going to make the turn. Instead, I'm going at that point, place 
to lift. Make sure that you've got what you think you've got. You are limited wiring. You need to be the adaptive control unit. Confirmed there on the screen, tick automated. We are running him at 50%. instead of natural spot. Whoops. Color codes here. This guy has power. He's the adaptive control unit set to 0 0.4 per minute. Bachelor engine. Have a smart plan. And he needs to be set to 100%. You have your smart plate. Bring our input starting with this guy since he come over here and come in. We need a total of five of them. I think he is. are not on the belt, aren't they? 
use, I think motors is the one that is one of the ones that I have to go carry by hand. Yep, motors are carry by hand. Please go. I had this worked out. I had this. Turn it. So four rotors per minute. Modular per minute. Modular engines, 500. We need a thousand motors. stacks it's not gonna hurry We need rubber. So first row will be rubber. It's gonna be coming down. Stretch, but we are now making modular engines. This needs to be two X is it should be two per minute. This is going to come out here and go back to the back. Or we're just going to drop it through a subfloor.
I need to bring both of these. So I need to plan for planes. Because I'm going to bring this one straight out. The other one I'll bring out to the left and out next line over. This line up easiest. I have run my out of fuel. Fortunately, it's at the depots. Pull down to find the fuel. Grab it because I put all of my stuff in a box. Forgot to put it. Also needs to be in a night sub four. Okay. Thinking was do that. him put his whole one to the left it might be better but huh. I really don't like it because you like So is off by one of where we got to have it. Fix these from the top. in the same place. <clears throat> I know, nobody ever sees what's going on. I'm organized. Just make it easier to deal with. Once again, I have 
underestimated. Just since I am traveling. <clears throat> okay, so all three of our outputs are now hooked up to the elevator. Now running properly. It's hundred percent. Machine is going to require circuit boards, heavy modular frames, and computers. <clears throat> heavy modular frames are on the bus, circuit boards and computers are not. So can't bring them through here. But these guys are gonna have to wrap around side. control units. I need 100 of them. So I need 500 circuit boards. 100 500 sir. Now we need to get heavy modular frames from the bus. Wait a minute, heavy modular frames are done. Yes. <laughs> heavy modular frames, we need 100 of them. Stacks. Got it. Thing here, all set. Go back to here. And we have done that. Done that. That is our entire checklist. Sit here and wait. But while we're waiting, this is going to take a long time. Um, modular engines are two per minute. Need 500 of them. That's going to be a little over four hours. <clears throat> In about four hours, we'll be ready to send off these three. And at that point, it will start feeding all of that stuff to the awesome sink, which will then put out a bunch of coupons for it. And I'm going to call that a recording because we really have nothing else we want to do before we send this off, unless we want to go, you know, I don't know, um, completely rebuild the old oil unit to use the recipe that's not the final one. Eh. So 
I'm going to just camp here and I will see you in the next recording where we will send off the elevator. Bye.